I do try to give airtime to as many different guns as I can, from the latest engineered marvels through to the military-style ones, polymer-based, single-shot, multi-shot, and even self-indexing marvels that are becoming more prevalent. Well, today I'm going back to more traditional and, to my mind, the beautiful. A laminate in traditional form and shape. The limited run nutmeg laminated laminate can't even say it BSA R10 regulated. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR On Air and those of you who follow the channel will know that I am and always have been a fan of the BSA R10 in its various forms and I just happened to be around when the phone call came from BSA to Vector Air stating they had a very limited number of these available and would they want any? There was I, in the background, nodding like a two-year-old, being offered chocolate biscuits, holding out my grubby little mitts, asking for more. Now, I know someone is getting ready on the keyboard already to claim I'm sponsored by BSA. And this can be added to the other companies and the list that is starting to build up that people have claimed I'm sponsored by. I'm starting to lose count now, but no. I'm not sponsored by BSA or anyone else, and I haven't been given this gun either, sadly. I do, however, work on the basis that if it's any good, then it, I will tell you. And yes, I will admit to having a soft spot for these R10s, being the owner of one in FAC form. The first very important thing I want to share with you is a little information around reliability and quality control. This particular point should have the manufacturers sitting up and paying attention. And if they're not, then they're either very, very good, or sadly, they think they're very good. And believe me, a lot of them should really implement better quality control before their guns leave the factory. Now, I'm not going to start naming and shaming, because that is a very negative thing to do. But I am prepared to give praise where praise is due. And this is not opinion. This is after years of experience and being closely linked with the point of sale outlets in the industry. Firstly, I am old school and I still like to fly the flag and feel, because I was born and live in the UK, which was always considered to be one of the centres of excellence with regard to engineering, now to find a traditional Midland-based company still putting out beautiful quality, accurate and above all reliable guns is fantastic and well worth a comment. Praise and testament to them. I realise no one is perfect and sometimes the odd error can happen but recently BSA stepped up to the table to produce around 150 guns for Vector Air following their superb Gamo package launch and out of all of those guns one had any form of issue, and that was simply firing a little low on power for Vector's liking. That was one out of 150. That's 99.3% success rate. Believe me, that is outstanding when it comes to gun manufacturers, and this is an absolute testament to the company and the guy or guys who put these together. Don't forget, the whole package is below £500, and with that level of quality? I've seen manufacturers have a 50% failure rate on their guns when checked at the retail level, and these guns had a four-figure price tag. Now, that's frustrating for the customer and the retailer, so surely the manufacturer has to be upset at the number of guns that are going to be returned to them for exchange or repair. Don't get me wrong. There are other manufacturers out there who are also very high on quality control, but this was never intended to be a top 10 best or worst manufacturer's list. And no, I'm not going to produce a list either. Anyway, 
With that cleared up and hopefully some positive recognition given, let's return to this absolute little beauty. I realise not everyone likes the traditional style, but as I've said before, that's the wonderful thing about our sport. There is something for everyone. Let's just do the walk around and hopefully I can do this R10 some photographic justice. Stats first. Overall length is 97 centimetres or 38.2 inches. Weight is 3.1 kilograms or 6.9 pounds unscoped. The barrel length is 39 and a half centimetres or 15 and a half inches. This is the shrouded barrel version, but if you don't like it, this can easily be removed and reveal the hammer forge barrel that gives this gun their superb accuracy. The standard and included silencer can then be returned to the end of the barrel or replaced with a standard half inch UNF fitting item of your preference. But the standard item is very good. Does that shrouded barrel system make any difference? Well, this comes with all the required parts to turn this back to standard non-shrouded form. So, out with the parts and out with the decibel meter. With the shroud removed, it was less than half a decibel louder than with it in place. I should point out, however, that the tone changes. This, of course, can't be recognised by a dB meter, but to my ears, this is slightly deeper or has more bass with the shroud fitted and a higher pitch with it removed. My conclusion from this is, if you have a preferred silencer that you absolutely must use, then you have that option. Or if you simply prefer the look of one style or the other, then again, you have that option. Below the barrel is the bottle type air cylinder. Again, some love them and others really dislike them. Either way, it is pretty useful with a shot count of around 165 in this 177 calibre sub 12 foot pound version. There are 0.22 and 0.25 versions available. They will produce a slightly higher shot count of around 225 per fill. I do love the way the stock meets the bottle and changes in finish to accentuate this transformation from metal to rosewood. These come with two 10 round no nonsense magazines, which are to my mind some of the simplest and easiest to load out there, which are a simple turn and drop until all 10 rounds of your preferred caliber are loaded up. Once these are fitted into the gun, there is a latch to lock them into place. They're also colour coded with blue for 177 and red for 22. They're also numbered to show what you have left in your magazine at any point. And finally, have a, vis a visible dot system to show you when you're on your last shot. Nice, simple, easy and reliable. What more could you want? This is a traditional bolt action and is silky smooth. I know people like their side lever systems, but this is a pure pleasure to use. It's not notchy or stiff. I showed this to a friend who is a keen shooter and when he tried it, the look on his face was priceless and he likes his side levers. The trigger is worth a mention too because it is multi-point adjustable match grade item and to me is satisfyingly broad. My only real picky point trying desperately to find something to pass comment on would be that the first stage is probably a little long for some, but as I've said, this is easily adjustable if preferred. Now then, this stock. I love natural materials and I know this isn't really for throwing around in a forest on wet muddy days. You'd be better off buying its sibling, the GX40, if you're going to be doing that sort of thing. But for target work and down the range or just for the sheer pleasure of owning and looking at it, to me it's a thing of beauty. The stock is ambidextrous with a thumbs up or down shooting position available. The front and bottom are rosewood 
The finish is excellent. Not a poor edge or unwanted mark anywhere. Nothing. The contours accentuate the wood finish and remind you that because this is a natural material, each and every one of these is going to be unique and individual. Adding to the fact that there are only 100 of these nutmeg laminates going to be available anyway. The filler port and gauge is on the underside and it recessed into the wood. The gauge is super clear and on this version there is a very useful filler port protector in the pack as well. Keeps it nice and safe and sound from any unwanted dirt ingress. As standard, this comes with studs fitted front and rear, which is a point a lot of manufacturers should sit up and pay attention to. Moving slowly backwards down the stock, you come to the multi-point adjustable butt pad. This will move not only up and down, but also left to right. What about power then? Well, this should be filled to an ideal 200 bar because this is the sub 12 foot pound version. And I've tried a few pellets just to find out what it was happiest with. As is often the case in the 177 caliber, which this is, the most commonplace pellet is the 8.44 grain. With those on board, it saw 10.88 foot pounds with only a four feet per second spread. Now, when we move on to the 10.34 grain, slightly heavier pellet, the power level goes up to 11.75 foot pounds with a five feet per second spread. And finally, I tried the 13.43 grain heavier pellets and saw only three feet per second spread and a slightly lower figure of 11.03 foot pounds of energy at the barrel. Proving, as is often the case, that these guns are at their most powerful using a slightly heavier pellet than the standard and used by all 8.44 grain version. So, if it's speed you want, then carry on using your 8.44s. If you want to maximise the power, then buy the 10.34s. So, the regulator's doing exactly as it should. What about that barrel? Time to get this out and down on the range. Now this is probably a good time to tell you the costings on this particular rifle because this is part of a package that has been put together by the guys at Vector Air and comes with a truly superb Vector Optics 60 x 50 first focal plane marksman scope with its VPA reticle and this is fitted as standard and part of the kit. It also has a really sturdy, high quality case. And of course, a proper tin of quality pellets and a customary complimentary mug, of course. This little lot will cost you £1,099 UK. So with that scope fitted, let's hit the range, shall we? Out at 40 metres, let's see what it can do. But it was cold. <laughs> well, I would have been shocked and surprised and disappointed if it hadn't been that good. For accuracy and consistency, these are my go-to rifle and have been for quite some time, which I have said before in the past. They have never yet disappointed me with their accuracy. Well, this has been a return to an old favourite, but 
with a difference of a quality package and above all that really really beautiful stock this is a rifle that i would happily put up against others at twice its price from a company who simply and very quietly gets on with it in the background working from the same factory they worked out of since adam was a lad and before anyone says it's owned by Gamo now, a Spanish company, all I've got to say is, why did they buy it? And where do they make the Gamo GX40? I'll give you a clue. It starts with B. And it isn't Barcelona. It's in the heart of England. So, they deserve to have the flag on their guns. And I'm proud they do. I'd like to say thank you to the guys at BSA for their hard work. Thank you to the guys at Vector for letting this two-year-old have his chocolate biscuits. I really enjoyed this one and hopefully you have too. Please give us the old thumbs up if you have and don't forget to subscribe. Click that all-important alarm bell to be informed when the next review is released. I will be checking out another laminate version of a firm favourite very soon. Have a look at the usual areas that we get involved with. Don't forget the merchandise that is available to keep you warm this winter. And finally, I would just like to thank you guys for watching. Stay safe and shoot safe. And I'll see you next week.